Hello everyone, in this video, let us use a script owner to fetch the value of a multi-select custom field. Last year we discussed how to fetch a value of a custom field. So that was all good, but I wanted to uh, also expand a bit further on that and uh, when you are working with custom fields, you uh, may encounter different types of custom field uh, because when you are dealing with, let us say, a field with one value, you can definitely uh, manage it easily. But when you when you are dealing with a multi-select type of fields, you need to use uh, you need to slightly modify your code to handle it properly. Now, in this particular example, if you look here, uh, I am trying to basically use. Uh, uh, a method called get, get custom field objects by name, where I'm trying to pass in my custom field name, which is countries. Now this will return us uh, uh, all the custom field names where uh, the field name is a country. So you, you will get objects, not just one object, but different objects because it says custom field objects by name. Now this will be uh, not just one but multiple uh, objects. Now, uh, there is another method that you can use and that is uh, custom field. Uh, so basically you need to use uh, another method to get the values of those custom fields. So let me uh, bring in the code here very quickly and then we will uh, take a look at and then we'll discuss how to fetch the value and how to handle it properly. Now, uh, the method that I wanted to talk about is called uh, get custom field value. Now let me just comment it out and and, uh, and I'll type it I'll type it again uh, just for you to just to explain how it works. So we can create a variable called C field value, and uh, we need to use. Uh, uh, and right now we are working with the issue object, so you can use a method called get custom field value and the argument is custom field. Now I'll select this and I'll pass in my uh, C field which is the custom field object but it is not just one object it is uh, uh, a list of objects because you can you can have more than one uh, uh, custom fields with the same name. So to access the, uh, the, 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 the first one the first object in the list which is the case in my case, in my instance, I just have one field, but I still use uh, uh, zero here. So that I, I'm only working with the first value uh, of the first field with this particular name called countries. Now, if I go to my, uh, my uh, Jira instance, and if I run this, I will probably get something like this, uh, India comma US, because it is a list, list of values that I will get and my field is uh, countries. So I can maybe select three countries in this particular multi-select field. And if I run this again, I will get of course three values. Now this is all good, but uh, uh, you need to also make sure that uh, uh, the field exists. For example, if I do something like this countries, I'll just you know type in some random name. And if I run this code again, I will get an error because here, here the error is talking about uh, uh, first of all it is null pointer exception error and it says get custom field value uh, is not working because you cannot get a you cannot really get a custom field value when your uh, custom field which is a C field in this case the variable that we are using is a null because when you run this on uh, when you basically run this particular, when you use this method, get custom field objects by name, if the field is uh, invalid, if the field name that you're trying to pass is invalid, it will return null. So we need to handle it uh, in our code. Now to handle it, we can simply use something like this. If I can type uh, C field and uh, I can simply check well, that, that you know if the field value is not null, then only run this otherwise um, otherwise it will uh, if the value is uh, 
null, it won't really run this code. And it will work this time if I, let, let us see, let us see. So it, it's, it is still saying some error like uh, get multi-select list value. And we also have definitely some error here because uh, let me just check where exactly is uh, the error. So if it is null, so I think we need to use uh, So I'm just checking where, where exactly is the error. So it says the C field value for class, get multi-select list value, uh, missing property exception. So C field value is uh, causing the problem. Uh, so let me just check here again. Okay, so we are trying to basically return this uh, C field value and there is no such, uh, um, there is no such variable here because uh, we need to declare it or, or maybe we can just return it here. C field value. Let us see if this works or not. So nothing will happen because the code hasn't really reached that point. Now this is this is fine, uh, but I don't really want to write if condition here. In the previous example, in the previous video we talked about uh, uh, and when, you, when, you, when you're writing scripts in Groovy, uh, you can also do something uh, like this. So basically, you're using a variable called C field value. Uh, but instead of writing if and else, you can first check for C field. If it is null, then it will uh, display this message field doesn't exist. But if it is not null, if it has some value, something similar to if C field, it will then execute this particular uh, line that this particular method issue dot get custom field that we just did. And in this case, I will of course return something here. So this particular C field value will get either the actual field value or it will get uh, the message field doesn't exist. So let, let us run this code and uh, it will now display field doesn't exist. This is also good. But what about uh, handling the case when, I mean, right now we are working with a list and it is a list of, uh, if I change the field name to a correct field name, it will display um, a list of uh, all the values selected by the user. And now you have a list, you, you can of course handle it in whatever way you want. So for example, I can do something like this. Uh, C field C field value dot each. So you can uh, basically use this closure and you can basically use log dot debug. And within log dot de log dot debug, you can uh, basically enter a message country uh, name, country name, and followed by dollar it and uh, will and it should display something in the log. So you can see here that we have three log entries, country name, India, US, and UK. Uh, so this is really a nice way of uh, basically iterating through a list. Uh, you can also do a few other things like something like I believe I comma IT. And you can basically use this country name dollar I. So basically we are trying to use uh, index as well. And if I run this code again, let us see. Okay, so we did something wrong here. IT comma I. I'm just uh, playing with Groovy. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me do a quick Google search. Uh, and if, let us fix this. So if you go to the uh, working with, I mean, this this is the official documentation and uh, uh, you need to use uh, something like this. Oh, so you, so basically I'm doing the, same, the, the correct thing, but instead of using, so when you have to use the index, you have to use each with index. So let us try that. Each with index. And, uh, and if you run this now, it will display something like this country name zero, India, country name one, 
us and so on so uh, you can try maybe i comma it just to see if it works and uh, now you can see here that uh, it is basically displaying so basically the first uh, the, the first parameter that you pass here is basically uh, the no so in this particular code it is displaying 0 1 2 so basically the first parameter here is the actual uh, uh, individual item in the list and the second parameter is uh, the uh, index value so this is something that you need you, uh, i mean you need to be aware of and uh, usually if you are writing code and you're dealing with the uh, list and uh, maybe you want to display the uh, index number like we just did you you need to use it comma i i so it could be i let us see let us see if, uh, if if instead of using i i want to use maybe something else maybe x y or z so let us use x here let us see if this works so i'm just trying to you know also give you some groovy lessons as i'm learning so if you do this you will you get the same result so basically the first variable here instead of using i you can also try ITT so you're not really limited to IT you can use your own variable and if you run this you will get the same result but IT uh, is a bit common if you want to be consistent in your scripts <clears throat> so people will understand if you're referring to IT that you are trying to refer to the individual item in the uh, in the list so this is all good uh, one more thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, uh, you can also do something like this maybe if you want to find out that I mean you might get list as the return custom field value which is of course a list of different items but if you do something like uh, custom field value type or class you can try to use c field value dot get class so if you try this and uh, if you run this you can also figure out and uh, you can also understand what is the return <coughs> what is the uh, class or type of that particular uh, variable that you are trying to uh, use in your script so you can do something like uh, this c field value dot get class and if you run this <coughs> you can see here that it says uh, custom field value type or class java let me just or you can see this so let me just uh, return it here return c field value dot get class so if i run this here and if you take a look at the result it is basically array list so all i wanted to do in this video is uh, demonstrate and show you uh, how to handle basically a custom field uh, value that you're trying to use maybe in your script because in Jira you have different types of custom fields so you need to basically ensure that uh, if you're dealing with just one value you can of course use it uh, easily but if you're dealing with list and you're trying to maybe use it in your script then you need to basically iterate over that list and for iterating you can use uh, a closure each or each with index uh, like we did in this uh, particular script and uh, don't worry about the script i will uh, share the script in the uh, in the link below in the description and uh, you can of course uh, play with this particular script what i recommend usually for uh, working with the scripts in jira using of course a script now create different methods for different types of custom fields so uh, you can also create single you, you can always create your own method where you can uh, 
pass in your custom field name and you can retrieve the value but in case you have maybe a checklist or maybe you have select list with multiple with multi select option or maybe you have different types of custom field maybe it could be a field provided by some app or add on so if you create a different method or maybe in your method, maybe if you have like, like a case statement to handle the, these different types of fields, then you should be able to easily manage it. Uh, because when you're dealing with custom fields, people always complain that my script is not working. I'm using a get custom field value, but get custom field value will get, a, will get you the value, but you need to also write code to handle it. And as we just discussed in this particular uh, video, uh, you also need to check whether the custom field exists or not. So just make sure whenever you're writing scripts also you know do some error handling i have been talking quite a lot about uh, error handling and uh, making sure that your script works uh, whether your issue exists or not whether your custom field exists or not or uh, maybe uh, you know whenever you're trying to update something in jira using script now make sure you are catching those errors and you are handling it properly so this is all I wanted to share in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.